I'm so happy. <laughs> so first of all, I'd like you to please excuse my voice. I am sick, so I probably sound a little crazy. But yeah, let's get started on this Hecaton. So this is what it will look like at the end and overall I'm really happy with it. Here it is on the table. I've been lucky enough to get quite a few games in with this as well as the rest of my army. So it's been really awesome. It's like the center of my army. Um, I love to blow people up with it. We're starting off with purple. I prime it black and then make my husband spray it purple because I can't use an airbrush to save my life, but he can. Um, <clears throat> and then I am just going to be taking the color whole red. And with that, I'm just going over all of the areas that I want to be the color of steel. So all those metally parts um, on the bottom, the tires, you can obviously see all the places that I've selected for this. And this is because this makes a really, really good uh, speed paint non-metallic metal recipe that you will see in just a moment after I am done with this step. So this is warm gray from the Pro Acryl line. Actually, most of the paints I use for my whole army are Pro Acryl, and I do have an affiliate code with them, so I will link all that below so you could get your discount, and all of that does go a long way towards helping the channel. Um, so I just loaded that up in my dry brush, and I am just, I don't know if this necessarily been a dry brush. It's more like an overbrush, because there is a lot of paint still in my brush and I am just dragging this over all of these areas and I do add a little bit of white to this mix afterward and just pick out some of the corners and edges um, and I'm taking this across the bottom as well I'm not gonna like fully paint the bottom but I have to have something going on under there just in case someone does peek under there you don't want it to be like completely stark no work done at all um, and so yeah, I'm taking coal black and a sable brush because they hold a lot of paint and they're very tidy I'm just cleaning up the areas around the tires um, on the wheels And then after I use that brush to kind of do the cleanup around the edges I'm taking a huge just like regular hobby brush and Tossing the color onto the other areas. It just made painting the tires a lot faster and less annoying, but still pretty annoying honestly um taking the colors dark blue and warm gray loading them up into my dry brush and i'm just dry brushing these wheels i like the blue because it gives it a little something a little intrigue a little extra um color in the shadows never hurt anyone and this color faded ultramarine is actually the color i use for the majority of my army so it's actually half empty i think this is the most of one color i've ever used on anything and at first i was being really really tidy and just like being super super careful trying to get all of the areas that I want to be purple and not get it anywhere else and that did not last long at all the more I did this I just realized since I'm doing inside out method anyway and I am going to be layering over top I just started throwing it around all over and just making sure that I was at least being thorough with this step which is the most important thing so after I got all those areas base coated, I am starting to build up some texture. So I'm just going in a second with a second coat, but I'm not painting it on just like flat. I'm doing it like some cross hatching, some stippling, some larger strokes in certain areas just to add like build up that texture from lower uh, layers. I found that I like the look of like really textured painting but not just the top layer. I start from the bottom layers and then slowly build it up. And at first it looks really bad and crazy as you can see here. But then once this layer dries and then you do it again and again and again with the different layers, it really does pop. And then all I'm gonna be doing is adding just a little bit of white each time that I do another layer over top and then do some cross hatching like you'll see here along with some edge highlighting. And this was the finished look for all of the purple. It came out really, really nice, I think, and I like it. Um, we're going with the dark gray blue, also by Pro Acryl, and I watered this down quite a bit, and I am just gonna be base coating all of the areas that I obviously want to be blue. This is the very satisfying cleanup step. This was probably my favorite part of painting this entire thing. And just look at it. 
just watch it. She's just so nice on all the areas that you've slopped up on prior steps to just clean it up and cover it in the blue. And it also really starts like pulling the project together. You can start to envision what it's going to look like. And this did take me forever to get all of this blue base coated, um, but that was done. And so what you're seeing now are the oil paints that I will be using. So I decided to go with oils just because there's so much panel work to be done. And I did my Sagittar by hand with just um, acrylics and it took forever and a day. I just did not have that time. This was when I was preparing for Adepticon. And so I just decided to try to expedite that process by using oils. So all I'm doing is placing the shadows and highlights. And if you look closely, you can see that there's on each panel, there's a dark side and a light side. And then on the panel directly adjacent to it, the dark side and the light side are flipped and then on the one adjacent to that the dark side and light side are flipped again and that is just to give it that contrasty effect that you see on models um i don't know if like you've noticed but it's usually to bring out the contrast to the to the most you do light on dark side and then dark on the other and then you switch it and you just keep doing that so i'm just blending those together I hadn't actually worked with oils in over a year. This was the first time I had done it in a really long time and I don't use any sort of medium to thin them down because I have like really bad effects, like adverse effects to the smell of it. So I just stick the oil paint right on there, which I used to do this on my channel all the time and it was apparently very controversial to not use anything to thin it down. Um, it is a bit more of a struggle to get it blended. As you can see, I did have to really work it through the brush, but other than that, I mean, it's the same exact principle. You just blend them together. And yeah, I did this for the entire vehicle, as you can see. And then that's what it looks like blended out. I thought it looked great until I got my Sagittar out and I realized like you just can't beat the saturation of acrylic paint. And I was really unhappy with how different they looked. So I decided for the edge highlighting, and this is with acrylics again, I did varnish it in between. Um, I went for a very like seafoam green color to kind of up the saturation a bit. It's looking quite white on camera, but it's actually green. And after I finished this step, it did match the Sagittar a bit better. And when it's on the table, you can't really tell a difference. It's just on camera for some reason. I don't know. But yeah, I'm just doing this edge highlighting and adding some texture. Um, the texture looks a bit drastic when it's just this panel as I'm looking at this on camera It doesn't look very nice, but then once I did the whole vehicle I think it really came together and I got a lot of practice with edge highlighting. So Yeah, and this is what it looked like after that step. You can take a look This took me forever and it was pretty redundant and boring. So I didn't like include all of it But yeah, I'm these are all pro acryl. You can see what colors they are We're gonna be working on the windows and doing some wet blending and when I'm wet blending I always lay the colors out on my palette Beforehand, so I'm not like trying to squirt everything out while I'm working the paint um, And I am using a size 4 sable because they carry a lot of paint which you obviously want when you're wet blending So I'm just laying these colors down going from red up to orange into yellow and finally adding some white and again it's kind of sloppy and I have to actually go back and do this twice so the first time these colors are really pigmented they go over the purple just fine but for that really really bright saturated look I did need to do two coats so yeah this is me just more establishing like where I want the colors to be and then, yeah, I go over a second time and do some glazing in between. You can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, so it's actually pretty stressful. I absolutely hate wet blending. I don't like that there's a time limit on it. I found if you use paint retarder, it helps with that because it dri obviously dries a lot more slowly so you can have more time to work the colors together. But yeah, this is not my preferred paint method. Again, this was me trying to expedite the process when normally I'd probably just slowly glaze the blends together, but we were on a bit of a time budget here. Um, and yeah, this is the second coat. So I am gonna be doing some stippling here. So I'm taking orange and I'm bringing the orange stippling up into the yellow and also bringing it down into the red just to kind of bridge that gap and make that blend look a little bit less harsh. I don't think I took one breath that entire time that I was talking. It was like three minutes long. 
So I did do some freehand, which I practiced on paper first, which is my only real tip for freehand is to just kind of get a better idea of what you want to do before you do it on your model. And this is an olive tree. And the reason for that is because my um, army is named after my daughter, Olive, and it's the Olivian Reserve Co. That's the name of my league of Mochan. Um, so it's just a little piece of lore really quick put in there um this is my magna rail my beloved magna rail i decided not to use oils on this because i wanted to challenge myself and try to get the same exact color with acrylics and i knew i could do it because i had already done it on my sagittar uh, it just took so much longer it just takes a lot longer to glaze these colors into each other but it just looks better in my opinion maybe i'm just not very good at using oils because i don't do it very often but it just always loses so much saturation and i just didn't want that for my magna rail so i just did it with acrylics and this is just what you see here if you're more curious about like what exact colors i'm using and how exactly i go about doing the glazing on this um i will link my hearth guard video on this video and it's the exact same uh thing i did in that video it's just did it i've crossed my whole army actually but yeah just in case you were wondering so yeah just doing this edge highlighting and like I said I've gotten a lot better at this lots of practice um, same thing goes for the purple I'm just building some volumes and adding some texture So I printed this from Deadly Print Studio. I will link them below. They have a lot of bits like this that you can print out if you have a printer or um, they have the physical ones you can buy on their website if you don't have a printer and you can just give your like vehicles that little pop. Um, all I did was did some dry brushing to give it that red look and then I used the yellow transparent paint from Pro Acryl. Then I went in with white on the inside part just to make it look like the light was coming from the inside and I'm doing a bit of glazing. It kind of looks like a hot Cheeto at this point, honestly, but that's okay because that that's actually my favorite food. Um, and yeah, I just, this was really quick. This took me about 10 minutes. So it's not, you know, an award winning magna rail, but it's good enough for what I needed it to be and I did magnetize it so I could pop it off. I feel like I didn't want it out all the time, you know, just sometimes, just when I'm shooting people. And yeah, that is the end of the video. I always feel so rushed at the end when I'm trying to say like a hundred things, but basically, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing my process. You should subscribe to my channel and you should follow me on Instagram. I will link that below and I hope to see you in the next one.